So when it rains, it pours, guys. Um, <clears throat> I've had a call from Denner King, the management, and uh, unfortunately, we've had another cheetah mother that's been killed, but this time uh, not by uh, poachers, but by a lion, unfortunately. And this is what happens in the wild. Unfortunately, sometimes other predators do succumb um, to other predators such as lion especially cheetah that are a lot more vulnerable so this poor cheetah also had some cubs and uh, the guys knew that that she was with cubs Matt one of the guys who monitors the the animals uh, on the reserve knew about these three uh, cheetah cubs and uh, so again, once he got the mortality signal, he went to investigate, found, found the carcass, uh, realized that it was probably due to a lion that, that she had died, but then set out to find the three cubs that they knew were in her care. I'm on my way to Dr. Caldwell, to Old Chapel Veterinary Clinic, to get my first glimpse at these guys. Yeah, I'm really excited to to see them um, and uh, so the family of cheetah cubs at the sanctuary grows from five to eight and uh, these guys will also be part of the program to uh, be released back into the wild. So as you can see, they're not the friendliest of cubs, which is great. Uh, they certainly have got a good fear of people. And um, that is awesome. I think these three are going to teach the Miracle Five a thing or two about being crazy wild cats, which is fantastic. Um, they all three are looking good. Um, they're eating well. And they're thriving. And I can't wait for them to come to the sanctuary and uh, meet the other five rascals that they're going to go with. I think it's going to be a formidable bunch of cheetah. It's, yeah, it's sad that it ended up this way. But once again, um, thanks to the quick thinking of the Denner King staff, these three have been spared and uh, they've been basically given a second chance, a second shot at life. And um, yeah, I think uh, they're, going to, they're going to do well. It's a good first meeting. I'm uh, going to leave them now. I don't want to overstress them. So I just wanted to come and document them here at uh, the vet and uh, I'm going to be on my way bid them farewell and uh, see them hopefully soon Right, hi everyone. So we are back with the Miracle Five. Should call them actually the Crazy Five. They are thriving. And as Caroline, who's raising them, calls them the little terrors, the little terror rascals, that's what they are. And um, they're always getting up to mischief. And today we're gonna be putting them in the bigger area, let them run around a bit, uh, burn off some of that excess energy, but the other incredibly exciting thing that's happening today is the three uh, little rascals that have been at the vet are coming home. They're coming to the sanctuary. Now, just to recap, these are three cheetah cubs. Uh, they are more or less a month younger than these five, but incredibly they are bigger because they were on mother's milk for a lot longer. And their mother, unfortunately, got uh, killed by a lion and uh, they were found again due to the quick thinking and actions of the rangers at Denner King. They were taken to Peter Caldwell. The one had a bit of a injury. The injury is now uh, rectified 
uh, we have a sex ratio of two males to one female and today is the day they come and meet the Miracle Five. The three newbies have just arrived. They're a little bit wilder than these five for obvious reasons. They were with their mother for a lot longer and on mother's milk for a lot longer. So yeah, I'm sure they are not as enamored with humans as you would expect. Well, that's as you would expect. They seem quite calm. You remember me? Remember me? Yeah, I was the horrible man who came and filmed you the other day. That's me. All right, so plan of action. They're due for their feed. Put them in the night pen with the door open. Food just outside with them separate from the other little monsters. See if they'll eat. If they eat, great. If not, we can put the food uh, where they can get at it and just leave them to be. Is Brenton coming with their food? Yeah, he's, he's just doing it. Well, you know, you're the cheeky monster, I know you. I remember you, that little face. Can't forget that face. Mm -hmm. You must be the girl. They can climb. Oh, yeah. pretty, they're a lot bigger, eh? Yeah, I didn't get much of a look at them because they're mm -hmm. literally in the net. <laughs> but they are, yeah. So they are one month younger, effectively, and they look about one month older, maybe more. Uh, just to reiterate, that's what mother's milk does. No matter how hard we try, with all the best nutrition that we can possibly give them, they still will not grow at that rate. Um, also, I think uh, part and parcel of why the five are a little bit smaller is because they were weaned onto meat so much earlier. Uh, they do tend to need their mother's milk for a lot longer. So, but that was done for good reason because we wanted to basically limit the amount of dependence on people. And that was the best way to do it. As soon as you start to bottle feed, they bond with the person feeding. And then that's a lot harder to break when they get older. Um, it's not impossible uh, to break at that bond. It's definitely doable. It's been done in the past, but it's just preferential to not have to even go that route. So all good. Yeah, it's unbelievable because these little five guys in the next area here are just full of it. Full of confidence, full of beans. All right, guys, so we've decided to let the three newbies just settle down in the 
the night area just to let them calm. The trip's been quite a hectic trip. Uh, they were vaccinated as well. And um, just don't want to stress them out too much. Let's see where they are. Right, so that's good news. They all ate their food and uh, we'll leave it there and we'll pick up with them tomorrow and see how they're coming along. And uh, I think the introduction to these little terror rascals is going to take a little bit longer than envisaged. Yeah, you guys, naughty. <laughs>